Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.7 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to tutorial 14, Laser Guided Bombs. Today I'm going to demonstrate the usage of the GBU-12, however the Mirage can also carry the GBU-16 and the GBU-24. Uh, operation of all of these weapons is exactly the same. So in this example we have the maximum possible loadout of the GBU-12, which is the 500 pound version of the Paveway 2 laser guided bomb. Um, you can see here that we're able to mount three of these on the center pylons. Those are pylons 3, 5 and 7. Um, if you're going to carry the heavier versions of this weapon, the GBU-16, which is £1,000, and the GBU-24, which is £2,000, they can only be carried one on the entire aircraft on pylon 5, which is the center most of the center pylons. Um, so if you want to carry more than one, you need to carry the GBU-12. This is the maximum possible loadout. Now you're probably asking the question, but Deepak, the M2000C doesn't have a targeting pod, or a laser spot tracker, or anything that would actually help it in doing this. That's true, uh, this aircraft is primarily an interceptor, however it's absolutely capable of dropping laser guided weapons with collaboration from offboard designators, be this in the form of other aircraft, drones, or a JTAC. In this example we actually have a JTAC down on the ground and the JTAC is going to assist us in deploying the weapon. They will laze the target for us. So in collaboration with uh, ground units or other aircraft you can absolutely deploy laser guided weapons. Let's jump into the cockpit and the first thing we're going to do is take a little look at the knee board. Uh, very th important thing to note uh, you can only set the laser code for your weapons using the ground crew and they can only make that change when the engine is off. So you have to be on the ground with the engine shut down. Uh, with that in mind, I have laser code 1688, which is the default. This is the code that I would need to give to any offboard designator who was going to laze for me. In this case, I'm going to use a JTAC though and they already know my code. So, first little bit of setup that I'm going to do is actually just to program the radio. We're going to use the green box radio, the VHF UHF that we have here, simply because this one's uh, really easy to uh, put frequencies into. The red box radio is just presets. Uh, we've got these presets that we can choose from a window. If this was already programmed in the mission editor, I could use that. However, in this case, I'm not. I'm just going to dial in a frequency. So we're going to go 23000, validate and we're now on 230 megahertz, uh, and that's what my uh, JTAC is on. I'm going to go ahead and contact the JTAC straight away, and we'll check in for half an hour. You'll see you get the flashing transmit indicator here in the, in the VHF window. See what he has for us. Yes, he's thinking. There we go. And when you're receiving, you've got a light here as well, which is quite handy. So we're going to copy our nine line. We have a truck convoy. And he's going to mark it by laser 1688, which just happens to be compatible. We have troops in contact and he wants us to egress south. With that in mind, I'm actually going to pre-program point two. Actually, wait, it's easier just to hit increment. There we go. Waypoint two will put us in the right position for that. Cool. Uh, we're ready to copy remarks. Use GBU-12s. Okay, he's giving us quite a wide range of attack headings, so that's fine. So he wants us to come in from the northeast, basically. Now we need to go and get ourselves set up. 
So let's go ahead and display our loadout just to confirm it. Uh, the weapons profile for the GBU-12 in the Mirage comes up as EL-1. You can see we have three of them on board and we also have 125 rounds in our two cannons. For some reason he reported it as 150, I guess that's a bug. So uh, let's choose the EL-1 profile. You can see here it's all selected. Master arm to on. Let's uh, choose a single drop. Of course, with GBUs, you're going to generally single drop them. And let's take the fuse out of inert, and we're going to put it into ret. Uh, that means that it'll drop, embed in the ground, and then after a short delay, it will go off. That should give us quite a nice effect on target. Uh, I'm not going to go weapons uh, system command switch forward yet to get... Actually, no, I will, in fact, I will, because th this is, in effect, a CCRP delivery. Now, this is a very important thing to keep in mind. Uh, we would have to be talked on by whoever is lasing for us, because we've got no way of really knowing where the target is, we've got no laser spot track, we've got nothing like that. So either the target has to be pre-briefed, or somebody needs to talk us on. So with that in mind, let's come out of active pause. We're going to go weapons system command switch forward, and I now have a diamond with wings on screen. So I happen to know the targets are in this area. Now we don't have to be super accurate because it's laser guided. Put the diamond where you want it and press air to ground designate, and then I'm going to come off target towards my waypoint. That will get us set up uh, in order to do this drop. Just pop it on the autopilot for now. Now you'll see, as I've demonstrated before with CCRP and the Mirage, we now have the diamond with wings, and we have a second set of steering wings telling us how to get towards that target that I've defined. Now, unfortunately, the aircraft doesn't give you any indication on the HUD or anywhere else as to where the actual target is. You have to uh, basically just fly the wings. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, also, note that you're going to get a line that will start at the bottom and make its way up. As that passes your set of wings on your diamond, you need to be holding the microbe second stage trigger, that's the, the standard weapons trigger, all the way down and keep it held until you get weapons release. Uh, the drop bar will then appear just above the diamond for the period during which the weapon is being released. Okay, we're at the IP now. I'm going to report IP inbound. Okay, he's going to call us to continue, uh, and at this time I'm going to ask him to put the laser on. Okay, he now has the laser on. Now, I'm supposed to come from a heading slightly north of the target area. That's the target area there. So actually, if I turn on target now, we should be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. And you just saw for a moment there the uh, the pull-up cue. Uh, so we're not going to dive towards the target, so we almost certainly won't receive that. But just be aware that uh, you have a pull-up cue. If you do dive towards the target, it uh, it may well come on. I'm actually going to turn off the autopilot now because that's going to interfere with my ability to fly the wings. Okay, so we're now just flying to maintain the diamond's wings in line with the steering wings. Once we get a little bit closer we're going to get the bomb fall, but well, it's not really the bomb fall line, it's just the, uh, the the drop indicator will appear here and make its way up. So let's wait until we get that. Should speed up a little bit. Not go this slowly. So right now our JTAC has his laser on the target and firing, and he confirmed that he was firing code 1688, which is the code that we accelerate e even more. And we're dropping singly. It would, of course, be possible to drop multiple, uh, but given that they will all guide to the exact same spot, there isn't really any point in doing that. You're generally going to drop these weapons singly. There's my, my drop indicator. I'm now going to pull my trigger to second stage and hold it there. That's basically me telling the weapon system that I authorize drop. Don't have to be amazingly accurate, because, of course, the bomb is guided. Bomb fall line appears above and disappears. Bomb is away. Let's follow the weapon now as we continue on. And in just a moment, we should see it start to turn towards the target if it picks up that laser spot. Actually looks like it hasn't for some reason. Okay, that is unfortunate. That has completely missed the target. You you saw that, that fusing delay.
Okay. That is very strange. Let's try again. I'm going to report in. And let's see if we can get another drop, and this time have it actually guide. It was most strange. Okay, another weapon away, and we're going to come off. Let's see if this one guides. I really don't understand what happened there. He should have had the laser on. There we go, this one's guiding. So that was strange. For whatever reason, the laser spot was not in the field of view of that first weapon. Um, maybe I dropped late, maybe the position that I designated was too far away when coming in from that distance. But that's the target. We actually struck the vehicle and then exploded. One unit destroyed, there you go. So, um, yes, I obviously did something a little bit wrong there, very strange. Uh, I guess the point that I designated was not quite accurate enough. I'm still carrying one of these bombs just now, I won't bother dropping the final one. Uh, one last thing to note again is, as usual when dropping weapons, uh, once the weapon profile is selected, you have options for TAS and RS. You want to make sure that both of these are selected. TAS simply means that the, uh, the weapon system will use the air-to-ground radar for ranging, and it also, this selection here, RS, means that the radar altimeter data is also being used. So that is the, the way that you employ laser-guided bombs, whether they be GBU-12, 16, or 24 in the Mirage. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deepak's Ground Crew for a small monthly fee. Thank you very much to those of you who have already done so. Big shout out to Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandra Hajvald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kertan, Tiger Moto, Sean IM81, Charts, John Bloor, Belly Tapani Corpicanas, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.